Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Today in True Crime and Portraits podcast. I'm your host, Jane Flowers. Today's episode is about true crime and portrait photography. I will be talking about my father's life and William Eggleston's photograph called, untitled, Greenwood, Mississippi, 1973, informally known as The Red Ceiling. While I speak about William Eggleston's Red Ceiling photograph, I will also talk about two art teachers based in New York that work at Khan Academy Smart History, teaching students about art history. The two teachers I will be speaking about are Dr. Beth Harris and Dr. Shanna Lindsay. These two art teachers made a video lesson about William Eggleston's photograph called The Red Ceiling while putting audio with the photograph to teach students about where the photograph was taken. The two teachers teach for Smart History, which is an independent non-for-profit organization, and they are also the official partner to Khan Academy for subjects they teach concerning art history. Khan Academy is based in Mountain View, California. The founder of this American nonprofit educational organization is Sam Khan. His educational organization teaches short lessons in the form of videos on his website in multiple languages for different countries. His website also includes supplementary practice exercises and materials for educators. I am unaware if Solomon Khan knew that Dr. Beth Harris and Dr. Shauna Lindsay were fabricating and slandering my father's life with a false claim they made stating his home was a brothel. But by the time people listen to my podcast and the word gets around back to Solomon that I did this podcast and spoke about him, then by that time, I'm sure he might eventually find out what has conspired from their lies they concocted in their heads about where they thought the red ceiling photograph was taken by William Eggleston in Greenwood, Mississippi by listening to my podcast. Solomon Kahn is based in California, while Dr. Beth Harris and Dr. Shauna Lindsay work for Smart History on the East Coast in Brooklyn, New York. On Smart History's website, it states that Dr. Beth Harris is the co-founder and executor director of Smart History. Previously, she was Dean of Art and History at Khan Academy and director of digital learning at the Museum of Modern Art. Before joining MoMA, Beth was Associated Professor of Art History and Director of Distance Learning at the Fashion Institute of Technology, where she taught both online and in-classroom. She has co-authored with Dr. Steven Zucker numerous articles on the future of education and the future of museums and is the editor of Famine and Fashion. Needle Women in the 19th Century, 2005. She received her master's degree from the Courtyard Institute of Art in London and her doctorate in art history from the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. Dr. Shanna Gallagher Lindsay also works at Smart History teaching art history to students. On Smart History's website, it states that Dr. Shanna Gallagher Lindsay has taught the history of Western art at the Fashion Institute of Technology, SUNY, since 1994. 
Also, her areas of specialization are modern and contemporary art and photography. She completed her PhD at the City University of New York Graduate Center in 2003, writing her dissertation on the installation artist Marcel Bruthers. The teachers taught their students false claims about my father's life, and I will now read to you their statement they made on a YouTube video for art video lesson that was also posted on their website with Khan Academy and Smart History concerning my father's life. The art video lesson is called Zero Two, The Post-War Figure, William Eggleston, The Red Ceiling, Greenwood, Mississippi, 1973. The video was posted on Smart History and Khan Academy, but I watched it on YouTube on a YouTube channel called Learn Hub. The red ceiling was taken at my father's home by William Eggleston, but what most people don't know is that the red ceiling photograph was not taken at 103 Virginia Street. Actually, it was taken at 508 MacArthur Street in Greenwood, Mississippi, but William Eggleston doesn't tell you this with his photo called The Red Ceiling. Instead, William Eggleston makes millions off of my father's murder with a photograph he took at 508 MacArthur Street in Greenwood, Mississippi, while he claims it was taken at 103 Virginia Street in Greenwood, Mississippi at the home of my father where he was murdered. Okay, let's now go over that YouTube video. In the video of Beth Harris and Shauna Lindsay, you hear them speaking about the interpretation of William Eggleston's photograph called The Red Ceiling and the location of where it was taken. At the same time, the red ceiling photograph can be seen on the art video lesson. If you would like to see the video I'm talking about, then please pass over to my YouTube page called Jane Flowers and look up the video on my page called Dr. Beth Harris and Dr. Shauna Lindsay Interpretation of William Eggleston's Red Ceiling if you need to understand better by watching the short video that is no longer available on Smart History's website. I suspect they took the video down sometime this year, but I wouldn't know for sure when they took it down because no one notified me when it was taken down. The video went as follows. Hi! I'm Beth Harris. I'm Shanna Lindsay. Beth. And we are going to talk about this, what looks to me like at first sight to be a very tedious and boring photograph. Like, why would you take a photograph of this? And why are we looking at this? We need to shed some light, so to speak. <laughs> Shanna. I will try, absolutely. Um, this is by uh, William Eggleston, who is a Southern American who shoots usually sort of strange places, locations, and oftentimes from a strange perspective, as you see here. Beth, mmm, mm-hmm, strange in that we're sort of higher up than we would be. Shauna, exactly. We are almost at the level of the light bulb, so he is obviously standing on something. The camera is probably held up away from his face in order to shoot this. It's really hard to tell exactly. Beth, where are we? Shauna, well, this is in Mississippi, in a place called Greenwood, Mississippi. And it's hard to tell exactly uh, at first, but you look carefully over here 
There's a little graphic poster on the wall. These are sexual positions. So, um, this is a brothel. Beth. So, that's what the red is about? Shauna. It has to explain that passionate color. That's it, people. That's pretty much the end of it. Where Dr. Shauna Lindsay states my father's home was a brothel. Both of the teachers agreed that because his wall in his bedroom was red and there was a poster on the wall depicting cartoon people in sexual positions, then it had to been taken in a brothel. This is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Do these teachers care how their actions affect the family members of my father? I would definitely say they don't care. If they did care, they would take the time to try to reach out to a direct family member of the murdered victim and ask he or she if Tom's home was ever a brothel before they made such a horrific claim for their students to learn all over the world with photographs of my father's home. But these two doctors did not take the time to reach out to any family member that is a direct relative of the murdered victim, Dr. Tom Boring. Instead, they said my father's home was a brothel based on the fact that the colors of his walls were red and by a poster hanging on the wall depicting sexual positions. I reached out to Dr. Shauna Lindsay through Facebook Messenger in February of 2016, and I want to share with you all our conversation we had. I asked her and begged her if she could please help me have Khan Academy and Smart History remove the video lesson and the YouTube video that makes false claims about the red ceiling to their students in a defamating and slanderous way while fabricating my father's life. Dr. Shauna Lindsay said she would reach out to the YouTube channel that was posting the video and ask them to remove it. Dr. Shauna Lindsay knew she worked for Smart History and that the school should remove the video from their website and stop teaching students at Khan Academy and on Smart History's website false information about a murdered man and his home, but she said she could not remove this bit video from her website that teaches her students false claims about my father and his home. Instead, she directed me to Learn Hub on YouTube, and she told me to take it up with them. That's pretty cold right there, let me tell you. Here's the conversation I had in February of 2016 when I reached out to Shauna on Messenger, February 2nd, 2016 at 11.38 a.m. Our conversation went as follows. I stated to Shauna, the red ceiling post you have on YouTube is still up and running. All you did is erase your name off the post. Did you think this is funny? Do you think telling people where I grew up was a brothel? And what does William Eggleston think about what you said? Does he know that you are misleading the public as to where the photo was taken? How does William feel about your interpretation of his photo? I received your message, but it was not taken down. Why do you keep lying to me? What is wrong with you? You can't look for yourself and see it's not down? What is really going on here? Then I posted a screenshot of the YouTube video that is titled, The Post-War Figure 04 William Eggleston, Red Ceiling, or Greenwood, Mississippi, 1973. It's categorized as education, and it was posted on the YouTube channel, LearnHub. Then I commented in another text to Shauna, 
please take this down. It says very bad things about my childhood home. I did not grow up in a brothel. Shauna responded back to me in a text. You don't seem to understand my message I sent. Please read carefully the message. I did no such thing. A race name. Read my communication from this morning and yesterday. Sent on February 3rd, 2016 at 12.31 p.m. I responded back to Shauna in another text stating this. I did understand your message. You must not understand my message. Your name came off of the video and the name can be changed from the red ceiling to post-war and then you text me that it's down. A lot of lies I'm getting from you. How is it you don't see on YouTube that it's still up? So when you tell me it's down and it isn't, then your name is taken off of it, then you are lying. It's not hard to check and see if it's still up and running. So now you understand, I hope. Shauna responded back in a text stating to me, The message is this. Khan Academy, source of the video, is the only YouTube page I have anything to do with. The video is no longer on that site. You left a message on Learning Hub. I have contacted them, but have no relationship with them whatsoever, nor does Khan Academy. My cordial message to them was to please remove as it contains false information and that as is apparent from your comments. A related person is upset. Learning Hub is the one to contact at this point, as I have because they are hosting the video, not the original. I said, do you have Learning Hub's contact info, please? Shauna, the only information I got was from their YouTube page. I followed link from there, but they seem to have a big site. Learning Hub, try maybe Learning Hub help technical help. Not sure that's right for their purpose, but beyond the YouTube link, it might be a good place to start. I'm sorry they shared it. And sorry we are not affiliated so as to be control of the content that they share from Khan Academy. I said, they're in California? Shauna, I guess so. I said, thank you. Do you know anyone from Mississippi? Shauna, I hope that they are responsive. I'm not sure what you are asking. I said, I will contact them. Thank you for your help. Was nice talking to you. Hope you have a nice day. Shauna. I hope you do also. So after our conversation, I never tried to contact Shauna again. I saw that she was not going to be cooperative and try to help me, so it would have been a waste of my time to try to contact her again. I am a victim just like my father is a victim. It pains me every day not knowing who murdered him. Khan Academy is teaching 120 million registered users. 20 or 30 million students are using their platform every month. They have 200 million hours of learning a year. I had no idea that Khan Academy taught over a hundred million people in the world that my father's home was a brothel until recently. Can you imagine? A hundred and twenty people who are registered users are able to download and learn about my father's home being a brothel when it's not and it has never been a brothel. Not only that, just recently, Tesla CEO Elon Musk gave a $5 million donation to Khan Academy as a contribution to help ensure 
that humanity has access to free world-class education through their website. I don't have thousands of dollars, let alone millions of dollars, to use to help stop and put an end to all the false claims that are put with photographs of my father and his tome taken by William Eggleston. I mean, seriously, if those two teachers knew for a fact that my father's home was a brothel, then obviously the video would have stayed up on Khan Academy and Smart History's website and on YouTube's Learn Hub, but that's not the case. They knew that they had no proof that my father's home was ever a brothel, and I had plenty of proof to back up my claim it was never a brothel to begin with. Therefore, they pulled the art history video about the location of the red ceiling off of their website. They really had no choice, but it only took them five years to pull it off their website from the time I found out what they were doing. I seriously think the reason they removed the video was because they didn't want to be sued by me. I'm assuming I can still sue them if I have the money to get an attorney, but these people are friends with Ellen Musk, so I guess I'll be suing his friends. I wonder how Ellen Musk would feel if he knew he donated $5 million to Khan Academy and the school used the money to teach students all over the world false claims about my father's home that he was not murdered in. I wonder how Elon Musk would feel. Do you think he would feel like his money was well spent? How do you think he would feel knowing that Khan Academy spent 20 years teaching students all over the world false claims about my father's life? Most people really don't care if William Eggleston is fabricating my father's life and unsolved murder. As sad as that may be, it's the damn truth. More people want to feed off the lies that he says about his life more than anything else. What I'm curious to find out if William Eggleston was aware that Khan Academy Smart History was teaching their art history to students this false claim about his photograph, the red ceiling, while stating it was taken inside of a brothel. That's what I'd like to know. I'll probably never find out if William knew about their art video lesson about his photograph, the red ceiling, because I seriously doubt any of these people I mentioned will ever speak to me about their false claim they made to begin with. I seriously doubt they ever will, especially since William Eggleston and his family have refused to speak to me about my father and his unsolved murder now for years. William Eggleston and his family refuse to tell me why they're making money off of my father's murder with photographs that were taken at his home at 508 MacArthur Street when they're telling everyone else that certain photographs were taken at 103 Virginia Street where my father was murdered. I mean, if anybody really wanted to know where the red ceiling photograph was taken and when it was taken, then why wouldn't the people that are in the art community and art schools teaching people contact the direct relative of Dr. Tom Boring, who would know? I mean, seriously, why don't people want to know about where the photo was taken by contacting his direct relatives? Not only do I know about where the red ceiling photograph was taken, but also my father's third and second wife knew as well where the photograph was taken. They knew that Tom never had any red rooms in his house that was once located at 103 Virginia Street. My goal is to teach people the truth about my father's life and unsolved murder with photographs that were taken by William Eggleston of his home and of his nude body 
while helping to preserve his legacy that has been fabricated and slandered over the many years for other people's personal gain. If you would like to learn more about William Eggleston's photograph called The Red Ceiling, then you're more than welcome to read about the photograph in my father's biography called The True Legacy of Dr. Tom Boring, an Unsolved Murder Mystery Biography. In his biography, I shared 45 newspaper articles about my father's life and unsolved murder. All these newspaper articles are recorded history of what happened within his life and his unsolved murder. I was able to find over 100 newspaper articles about my father's life and unsolved murder on the internet. All these articles are recorded bits and pieces of my father's life and unsolved murder for the public to enjoy. I was not able to find any newspaper article that spoke about my father's home being a brothel at 103 Virginia Street. Yet, Dr. Lindsay and Dr. Harris claim that my father's home was most definitely a brothel. There were never any arrests at my father's home address at 103 Virginia Street that would be related to any prostitution sting on a brothel. Therefore, these two doctors were making money while they lied about my father's life and unsolved murder to their students all over the world. This is really devastating to our family when we know that Tom's home at 103 Virginia Street was never a brothel. Meanwhile, the truth about photographs William Eggleston took of my father and his home are continually fabricated and slandered all over the world for someone else's benefit and gain. In 2016, when I became aware that Khan Academy Smart History was teaching students about my father's life and unsolved murder, false claims that his home was a brothel, I would later learn that William Eggleston published that same year a new photo book called Portraits. As well, he put a portrait exhibition on that accompanied his photo book called William Eggleston's Portraits. I will be speaking about this subject on episode 15, dropping in a couple of weeks. I want to educate everyone about the true origins of a couple of photographs that are spoken about in the portrait exhibition that are of a nude Dr. Tom Boring standing in his bedroom, and the other photograph is Dr. Tom Boring standing in his garden. Both photos, of course, were taken by William Eggleston. This is going to be a great episode, so please make sure you don't miss it. I hope you are all able to clearly understand all that I have stated to you in this episode. If you are not, then please comment in the comment section if you have any questions about my episode that you need clarity on. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe and leave a comment. I'll see you next episode. Until then, goodbye everyone.